Cheers. Cheers! Welcome, Welcome to, to Movie Bitches. Bitches, episode 155. Tonight we're reviewing Baby Driver. <laughs> Baby Driver. <laughs> Boom. <Boy. laughs> uh, so you might not know this, but this is the sequel to Baby Chef. <laughs> Do you remember Burnt? I don't. <laughs> uh, first things first, shout out to our wine sponsor, Wink. Trywink.com slash movie bitches. You get $20 off your first month of wine. Yay. This one is good. This one really is. I have to say. Rogue Admirals. Mm, it's from Australia. So Baby Driver is the Edgar Wright directed uh, heist driver getaway driver movie. Why don't you try it? <laughs> So, Baby Driver, the new Edgar Wright movie, which I was really, really, really excited about because I love me some Edgar Wright. And I was stoked that he didn't get so disheartened from... End of the world or whatever. World's End. <laughs> no, from Ant-Man. Oh. Because he quit. It got taken away That's from him. That's right. That whole thing happened. He made more movies and is making a lot of money and I'm very happy for him. But I didn't like this movie as much as I thought I was going to like it. I really didn't. At first, actually, I hated this movie. Oh, I was getting ill. So the first chase scene is very frenetic, and I was like, okay, this, yep. is, what, this is cool, okay, yeah. it's like a really cool, like... You're feeling the vibe, it's like listening to music, like, oh, oh, what? Choo, 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 choo. Yeah, like, cool. there is a uh, three-minute, four-minute one -er Yeah. that was so nauseating. Yeah. Oh, um, and I was really worried. It was like... Birdman Tokyo Drift, you know, where it's like, <laughs> like, what, why are we, what's... I don't know, it's weird how some wonders, like, make me ill, and some don't. Like, the <laughs> amount of swooshing that's happening. Well, it really depends on how much movement there yeah. is. You shouldn't notice it's a wonder yeah. until halfway through your, and then you go, oh my god, wait, that's been the same, oh, holy shit! Yeah. That's a good wonder. Right. And that's like giving you new information and revealing something and there's a sure. purpose for it. And this was very much like, this has had no point at all. Nope. It's just distracting and nauseating. Yeah. It reminded so me of the up. shot in Moonlight at the oh very God. beginning. And I was oh like, God. is this what this movie's going to be like? And it's like, oh no, it's, it's like, not. Oh dear God. <laughs> yeah. It was that. Where it's like two people like on the street and it's like, but we're going to weave in and out and around. The camera's just constantly moving. And I'm like, why? He kept on running into people. Yeah. He was like going full Nomi Malone and just being like, <laughs> like he would just dance into people and they'd be like, excuse me. And I just, that choice didn't make any sense. Like, no. I was like, what? Jerk. Like lots of like, like off screen, he like, just being like, you're oh, a dick. Yeah, no, get out of my way. Having mm. a car have to stop in front, like slam on their brakes because he might hit them. Like, and then, and then that like taxi was just like, it was just, it was so performative. What did that, what did that mean? Like for his character. I don't know. I guess it was supposed to be like, he's so cool. Like in the Goofy movie, like when Max is like, you know, the opening song, like he's, all the things are parting for him and yeah. da, 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 da. And that's supposed to be like, he's real cool. But this wasn't that. No. And that's, <laughs> that's what like was weird to me about this, where it made sense when he was listening to the music and driving. Cause it was like, yeah, that's badass. Like you're doing it with the beat. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. I got to start the song over again. Like, that you know, was like, amazing. I loved all that. Yeah. But then when he was just in regular everyday life walking to get the coffee for the, like, yeah. the murderers, yeah. like, it, it was weird. It, it like, makes sense if he was in love, right? And it was like, Deborah, Deborah, now I'm gonna oh, dance. Oh, oh, oh no, a car. Like, yeah, sure, so, sure. You know, taken away. I'm singing and in the rain. Whatever. I get it. <laughs> yeah. But that wasn't this. No. It was just like, he just always has well, and a song was, in his heart, like, she, and, and, and dance in his step. I don't know. And if it's more, if it's like, he's, walking like he's driving right that's sort of the conceit right but then he needs to be better at it because he yeah. literally kept running into people i needed him to be right. like so skilled at just exactly. like maneuvering like, and like seeing ahead and yep. going dipping under the glass sure. paint, the silly <laughs> silent movie glass paint you know things like that that would have been fun this was like confusing to me the thing i'll say about this movie is it was uneven yeah i found myself having a fun time and then i would be like Mm, and then it would be fun again, and then, mm, and I just, I couldn't ever get into it. It felt like, stop, start, stop, start, stop, I, start. I agree with that a little bit. I also just, like, I don't know, I ended up liking it. I did. I ended up liking it. I didn't hate it. No. I just... I had a lot of problems with it. I wanted to really like it. Yeah. I also just found him to be tedious. 
They, the they, main guy? Yeah, they eased off it a little bit, but like when they're introducing him, it's like the most painful oh. thing. Well, Where just like the filmmaking was just so... It was very self-conscious. Yeah. The whole it's first 15-20 like, was very like show-off-y, self-conscious. It was like, like an iPod commercial. It felt like, you know, like film school. Here it's he is weird. bopping around. We're going to have because this like, shot with him dancing. And there's like different colors in the window for yeah. no reason. Oh, here the laundromat. Each washer has a different color. Fuck you. This isn't La La Land. What's <laughs> happening here? <laughs> He's constantly dancing and, and sort of... It's the difference between, do you remember the scene in Billy Elliot when he's getting all the things ready for breakfast, right? And there's all these little quirks to like his toaster and his this and his that and he's making breakfast and he's dancing because he's Billy Elliot and it's like, that felt organic. Right. This felt very rehearsed. Yes. And so it was like stale. Yeah. The, the like dancing around. It was just weird to me and it didn't feel like, oh, he's just a rhythm guy who's just... I don't know. You know, but that's what they wanted you to be like. Oh, yeah. it's just in his blood, like right. I wanted to but, be like grooving with him. Yeah. And for some reason, I was repulsed by him. <laughs> I was just like, mm -mm, stop tapping your fingers. It's annoying me. I don't know. It was too much. <laughs> I don't know. He was whatever for me. Sure. This the, the big my biggest problem with this movie. I didn't care about the characters. Oh, I did. Who were you, who were you rooting for? He was, I liked him. Okay. I was repulsed by him. I was repulsed by him. Repulsed by him. He had no, like, agency. All of his decisions were either made for him. Well, he was trapped. Totally, but like, the, the biggest problem with the movie is, okay, so he's finally at the end given a choice, okay? Do you want to continue and do this job or not? Right. And he for reasons I don't understand, says he'll do the job. Because otherwise he was going to kill his girlfriend and... No, when Kevin dead. Spacey is like, it's your choice, what do you want to oh, do? Oh, at the at very, the very end, end. Kevin Spacey is like, this seems shady. Yeah. You know, like, shit's going wrong. What do you think as a person, a character that I'm finally asking for an actual opinion of, do you want to do the job? And it's not fully clear why he says, yeah, let's do this. Because then he's supposedly just going to run away. And so it's like, I was, at that moment, I was like, so all of those people that died in the final scene, all of the shit that happens is for what? That's fair. And that's when it really lost me. When I was like, well, why do I care about him? Well, yes, he did not really have a plan. Mm -hmm. Which, to be fair, was their plan. They did say multiple times they wanted to drive on the twenty. Till it stops with music and no plan. Right. But they that did was, that. That was the goal. They did that. That April. wasn't that wasn't the plan to they, get. They to did that. that. They, they did do it. They drove with no plan. With no plan. <laughs> and it backfired, spoiler alert. <laughs> and their love story was was insufferable? No. You were rolling your eyes. Yeah. At their dialogue. Yeah, that's true. What is your name? Baby. Your name's Baby. B-A-B-Y baby. I don't know, it just didn't like connect. Or like John Hamm was there. John Hamm was so weird. Uh, like okay. his girlfriend was The whole thing there? with John Hamm and his girlfriend was too much. It was like I was watching Keeping Up With The Joneses or something. Remember that awful oh movie? Oh my god. Like, it was like, what? It was, this? that was really bizarre. He had a real harsh uh, five o'clock shadow and I was, was concerned for, for her face. Mm, it was gonna have just a like, it was gonna, it was gonna be itchy, and she was selling it. Sure. And it was also oh, no, annoying that, that every person that they ever worked with, it was like, "Who's this baby kid? Why is he on it? Why is he listening to them headphones? Damn kids these days!" You know, it was like, "What is?" It? Well, there was like, there has to be the one person on the t crew that hates silence. You know, like hates anyone who doesn't speak a lot so right. it was so they must weird. be i don't know they i guess like, they didn't trust him and their whole thing is like i'm gonna be robbing a bank with you i have to trust you but i don't know the whole conceit of kevin spacey sets up a different team every time but baby's always the same and there's gonna be the same dynamic of oh this time john bernthal is gonna be the asshole who's like goading him right. for not talking and th this time it'll be jamie fox and it was just like why? So, spoiler alert, but whatever. So they get to this last final heist, and they had to go get new guns. Right. Which because Jamie Foxx essentially is playing chaos. Sure. But because we don't care about 
any of the other characters, it was like, there was no tension for me, because I was like, well... So I think the reason that they had to get new guns was because the Asian guy that they shot... Dropped one? ...left his shotgun, which is why they shot him? Because his fingerprints? But did they, they didn't wear gloves? I don't know. Well, that was the other thing that annoyed me, like and it was really weird. They all would wear masks and shit, but, but he, he wouldn't, and yeah. he was like, here is a picture of him in this red light, red light camera. camera. Here's this post office worker. That seemed real stupid. Yeah, I thought Kevin Spacey was setting him up. Yeah! Kevin Spacey sends him into the post, like, to stake out the post office and tell me how many people work here and how many cameras, da 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 And so I was like, oh, so he's clearly setting him up, so he's, like, on film because of some nefarious reason, sure. whatever, blah, blah. Oh, no, it was just a bad plan. I kind of wish there was more, like, there, there. It was it, a bit shallow. A little bit. Which is fine if it's pure fun. Right. But it tried to also have this, like, kind of moral integrity right. story. Oh, right, which then gets dropped because, so, okay, so they go to get new, new guns, new guns yeah. and Jamie Foxx is just like, oh, that's, that's a cop. And so he shoot, starts shooting everyone. Yeah. And there's, like, this whole, like, shootout. Kevin Spacey is like, we're going to scrap the whole thing. And they're like, no, nah, I still want to do it. If, like, if the cops are going to come get us and we have to go escape, then we might as well escape with money. Then they're like, well, should we do it? And meanwhile, he's had a plan at 2 a.m. to drive away with his girlfriend. Yeah. And I'm just like, why doesn't he just say no? And, and be he, like, nah, this is too risky. I'm out. Right. Find a I different mean, driver if you want to do it. Kevin Spacey literally says, I will find someone else to drive for you. Like, the only explanation is, like, he maybe he thought Jamie Foxx would, like, retaliate. But, I mean, but Kevin why? Spacey literally gave him numerous yeah. outs. And so I just couldn't... After that decision, I was like... Everything that's happening is pissing me off because that's fair. all these people are dying because I don't know why. So there was like a lot of cop shooting. There was a lot of cop shooting. It's not like a, like them versus like another like gang oh, of bad guys bad or guys whatever. Exactly. Also has a I, I don't know. It broke the movie for me. Yeah, I feel that. I was like I had a real like not cool feeling with it. Yeah. Because they were just like uh, it also seemed crazy to me where it's like oh you're just gonna start shooting at this group of cops. Thinking what? The sexy wife is just standing in front of 12 cops. Yeah. And she's just like, da da da. I mean, I guess the conceit is like they're insane, but then why am I rooting for them? I wasn't rooting like, for them Jamie ever. Jamie but... Foxx is insane. Yeah. He's like a crazy person. Yeah. And John Hamm and his girlfriend are pretty crazy. On drugs and Well, sure. But that's never really explicit. No. I needed them to be like on Coke. Right, like, like it, she was like, boop, time. boop, 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 like, boop, boop. Some Scorsese style, like, we are doing cocaine. Because yeah. it's already rated R. They, I think my expectations were too high. Maybe. Because it's Edgar Wright. Right. It's a driving movie. Although this is so different than his other movies. Well, I also realized he wrote this by himself. And it makes sense. Like, I feel like Simon Pegg, he needed to, like, shoot him the script and be like, we just do, like, a pat, like, a one, it's once over punch up. And just, just pan through. Because... A lot of the dialogue was just like, what? Yeah. There was moments that were really funny, right? Where you were like, oh, this is the movie I want to be watching. Like right. the Mike Myers versus Michael Myers stuff. Like that was really funny, yeah. you know? There was jokes in there. But then a lot of it was just some, like, I would be like, what are you talking about? I wanted Baby's backstory to be more flushed out. It would have been nice if we saw Baby before he was driving. I just want to know who he is and why he's doing what he's doing and how, like particularly rather than having Kevin um, Spacey. Spacey, I want to say Kevin Klein and I knew it wasn't. Oh, oh now that's interesting. Maybe not mad about that. Kevin Klein is like the mob boss? Yeah. I mean Kevin Spacey did a great job, but I am yes, always, but Kevin I'm Spacey, always here for some Kevin Klein. Kevin Spacey was also just giving me a little bit too much Frank Underwood. He was doing Kevin Spacey. Sure, sure. That's fine. Yeah. That's what he does now. <laughs> By the end, you're sort of, there's sort of this father-son-ish thing happening. I guess a Kevin little Spacey bit. Kevin Spacey and him sure. are mentor mentee. There's right. some bond, right? Sure. That would have been interesting to sort of... Also, delve his, into a little more. His demise was pretty bad. Well, the last 15 minutes of this movie was real wacky. It was real wacky and it pretty became bad. A different movie? Yeah. That was like Benny Hill music could have been playing over it. I would be like, yeah, this is appropriate. Because it was just this wacky. I mean, John Hamm turns into like a devil or something. <laughs> it's like now he's just lit with red. Like he might as well have been like, ha ha ha. 
<laughs> I'm gonna get you. <laughs> I'm gonna tie you to the railroad tracks. <laughs> and he's like, they're just using cars as punches, essentially. Yeah. Like punching each other with cars. Which doesn't seem realistic to me. I mean, it doesn't seem like a great idea. I they just... would all have whiplash, for sure. <laughs> For sure. And John Hamm is essentially the Terminator at this point because he, he just will not die. Yeah. He has been shot by the police, yep. been hit by a car, yep. he's bleeding. He fell off a parking structure in a car, upside down. Remember the car fell off and then caught on fire, but then he was magically up. Oh, six well, flights. he had escaped. He'd escaped the well, car sure, before but it fell the off. Ca the car still fell. He jumped out of a car that fell. Yeah, how did he do that? And then it was unclear. And then. Um, he runs over Kevin Spacey, like, hilariously almost. Like, it became comedic how violent it was. Right. Like, he just hits him with his car, then he runs him over again. Like, it became Tarantino. It, 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 it did, it did. And, and then, it wasn't clear to me, though, like, what his beef with Kevin Spacey was. John Hamm? Yeah. I think he was just, like, rage. Collateral. He was just like, ah! I don't know. I don't either. It felt very, like, true romance that Tar Tarantino wrote it. I think Tony Scott directed it, and it was very, but that's like, dark. Like, that movie gets fucking dark. Sure. And this movie, even though it was rated R, was still real, like, cute and shiny. And True Romance, you're like, oh fuck, oh this is just fucking real. And you're like, whoa, Gary Oldman's here, he's got a gold tooth and dreads, shit's going down. You know. But it felt, it was like the same thing where it was like, oh these two people are in love, and like, they're on this adventure where people die because crazy shit and blah. You know who I wish had rewritten written this script? Shane Black. Um, sure. Wind River. Ta ta Taylor Sheridan? Ta Taylor Sheridan. Taylor, Taylor Sheridan. Taylor Sheridan. Taylor Sheridan. Um, yeah. don't you think? Yeah. Because he really gets, like, like I was just thinking about... It would have been a, more of a basis in reality. What was it, what was it called? High... Hell or High Water. Hell or High Water. Like, that kind of reminded you where it's like, ah! That, like, that was that like, kind of... Hell or High Water held more tension throughout where you you are rooting for bad people because right. they've developed their characters and their purpose and their reason for doing this and they have a plan and if the plan goes wrong they regroup from the plan right. this was very like they're criminals because i guess you could say like oh he's like a little kid and that's why he's making poor decisions but that's not really a person i want to be rooting for no but also like his name is baby he's 23 years old it almost needed to have more of like a David Lynch thing going on where it was like this shiny surface and then like uh, yeah. the dark underbelly of what's actually going sure. on. Sure. Something. I don't know. The tone was very bizarre. A little more drive and a little less baby. When you think about the opening scene from Drive, that car chase, right? Remember he's in the white car and he's listening to the baseball game on the yes. radio and it's just like, like that is so fucking intense and like Yes, and you're in the journey. You're on the journey with him. You're yeah. in the car. You're yep. there. You're go. Oh, you know what's he gonna do? And you're. It's so good. You know. Yes. Like a car chase should have a three part structure, right? Just like a movie. Like the car chase in the town, is so good, right? It's just like oh fuck when they're all the nuns in the minivan, and you're like they're in a minivan. How are they gonna escape? For you never saw the town. It's really good. I know. It's the reason I'm like oh Ben Affleck, you can do stuff. What was the other one, Baby Mom? Gone, baby Gone. <laughs> was it Gone Baby Gone? That was his first. Trip, yeah, actually. that was good. I yeah. saw that. And then the town just looked too bleak. I was like, no, it's I don't It's really want good. It. You'd like it. Okay. Maybe. It's really good. I know. Anyway, it has a fucking kick ass chase scene. Where I remember this like, from the trailer. Edge of your seat. Like, <gasps> like I wanted to have, like, be holding my breath in this movie. Sure. And I, I wasn't. No. The more I think about it, the, the less I like this movie. Like, I didn't hate it at all. No. And I had high expectations. So that's my, why sure. I'm reacting this way. Would I watch it again? Maybe, but I, I just I didn't have like a blast. Which I wouldn't bad. not watch I it again. Not watch but it I again. wouldn't be like, yeah, I really want to watch Baby Driver. Again. I'm shocked. I know. I was really expecting to like this movie and just be like, fuck yeah, I can't wait to download this soundtrack. Like, and I'm gonna remember that great chase scene with that song. Like, and I'm gonna make that memory. No, mm -mm, couldn't tell you. Wouldn't it have been fun I to have a crazy. chase scene with nine to five playing? Yeah, so there's working this whole, nine to five. There's this whole lead in with. He goes to the post office, he has this chatty conversation with the postal worker about Dolly Parton. I was like, oh, I cannot wait for, even if it's not 9 to 5, because that's so famous. I was like, I can't wait for him to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to do a fucking car chase to Dolly Parton. That's going to be amazing. He's like, oh, I have to go back to work, even though I don't want to, right? That and then so it's like, funny. working 9 to 5, like a montage. <laughs> working 9 to 5, what a way to make me. 
And it sets up this whole motif. So at the beginning, he's like secretly recording everybody, right? Yeah. For fun. And he does this whole, you know, he puts a beat behind it <laughs> yeah. and does a whole thing and remixes it. Mental means slow. Was he slow? No. Slow, slow, slow. And makes a tape out of it. And I was like, oh, great. This is going to be a, a recurring theme. And he's going to do this throughout the movie. And then he's going to drive to his mixes. Oh, I'm really into, oh, it never happens again. Yeah. And so well, and then I was like, oh, so like he wants to be like a DJ or like a something. musician. Yeah. No. No. So I have a question for you. Okay. Okay, so during the second heist, again, one of the biggest problems is that you do not care about the heist and are uninvolved with the heist. Yes. Because you're just in the car with him. You're almost actively rooting against the heist, yeah. I would say, like, because you're like... Because he doesn't want to really be doing no, it. No, he doesn't want to be doing it. But anyway, so they're on the second heist, and that guy in the truck, they're like in the middle of the heist and there's some guy randomly in the parking lot who decides he's gonna just like chase them down like Terminator style and just has guns and is shooting them and is like running them off the road and then presumably dies because his car just tumbles and tumbles, tumbles and tumbles and tumbles. I mean, he's certainly in the hospital. Sure. Assuredly. I didn't understand that. He was certainly someone who was like trying to be a good Samaritan, you know, where it's like, oh, he saw what was it going just, on like, and like... It just kept happening. And I was like, I don't know what this is, but okay. Okay, here's what I, I, I just, I think I pieced together what I w wish had happened. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go as far as to say I fixed the movie because... It's not quite broken. No, but whatever. So I wish that it like maybe starts with him stealing, stealing Kevin, Kevin Spacey's, Spacey's car. car. And you're like, oh shit, he's stealing his Mercedes. Oh shit, Kevin Spacey's there. Oh my god, he's gonna kill him. Yeah. No, he doesn't. He's impressed. He wants to like loop him into his gang and mentor him. Can we also like explain why he started stealing cars and how he learned to drive so well? Can That'd be great. And why he knows how to do parkour really well too. Can we like figure that out? He's a dancer. The rhythm is in his body. Rhythm is within him. He's a dancer. <laughs> he went to Alvin Ailey and then he became a driver. Not a stripper. The <laughs> dancer. Um, but so, okay. So yes, we, we find out he's stealing cars, but oh, it goes wrong. Oh, or does it go right? Because now Kevin Spacey, this mob boss, is like taking him under his wing. Oh, I've got money and like all this. Oh, maybe I kind of oh, like it. Oh, this could oh, be kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Right? So then we Ever see Ever since him. I was little, I wanted to be a gangster. Like freeze frame you know like yeah and so then it's like car chase car chase car chase different song different song you're like oh all of these different things money you know loving it boom boom credits boom. over the credits yeah we bam, get it bam, he's bam. the baby driver he nails it every time he's like boop boop got away from y'all bye <laughs> great bye <laughs> So, but then, but then. And then I just had this vision of him like throwing pacifiers out the window as oh he goes, because right? he's the baby driver, like, bye! <laughs> it just spins, like falls. <laughs> and then it's like, <laughs> baby driver. <laughs> I mean, just like go for it. No, just, just take it don't there. do that. But, take it there. But a little bit. But like maybe just a little bit? I wanted him to own himself. I wanted him to a be like, little bit, yeah. yeah, I'm a fucking great driver. Yeah. I fucking love it. Yeah. You know? And then to have that like, ooh, but I don't like violence, but I love driving. Well, and so that, oh, I'm okay. addicted to this adrenaline. Ah! Also, I just kept waiting for him to like be like, cool, I'm just going to go to the cops and turn in Kevin Spacey. Oh, sure. As the head like, of all of these bank robberies. Or just be like, cool, I'm just gonna boost a car, throw grandpa in the back seat, and like drive and, to a different state. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take Deborah, take foster dad Gramps, <laughs> and we're gonna go, we're gonna go to fucking California. Yeah, oh, bye. Or wherever. Yeah. Bye. I kept wondering, I was like, so he's just gonna leave. So he's just gonna be like, ba -ba doo No, that's not how it, oh, okay, everyone's gonna die. Oh, oh, that's. Everyone has to sleep over in this warehouse overnight, even though you're all adults before the heist. That was weird. <laughs> Why was that? Because... Because. Like, so they could find him and be like, don't... Oh, you can't go. There was a lot of just, like, cuz. Yeah. You know? Oh, right, and then there was the whole, like, I found the tapes, you've been recording us thing. That whole thing that didn't matter. No. Like, it just was like, and anyway... Like, if it had been a through line of him recording more and more stuff, and then sure. he should have turned him in with all the recordings that he initially was recording innocently Just because to he wanted the... to make music. But, but then, then when like, it turned dark, he oh, was like, shit. no, this is fucked up. I don't want to be a part of this. Here be these tapes. Yeah. That's what I would, like... Give me a deal, DA. Exactly. 
I also would have liked more romance between him and Deborah, where it's like full on, like where was it, this like a sex scene of like him losing his virginity so to her like, or something? Baby, baby high school time, and yeah. I was like, it's like well, let's play house. It's, it's like, like what? Let's run away together. I don't know. There was a weirdness that I was like, mm. yeah. I really wanted to love this movie. It was like seventy-seven percent there. Like, and I feel like we complained about it the whole time. There was some fun stuff. Yes. There was fun songs. Yes. There was cool driving. Yeah. There was funny parts to the movie. Like, he's pretty good too. Like, I would see him in other things. I was repulsed by him. I was repulsed by him. Repulsed by him. I would. He was fine. Like you had said, so you told, April told me that I guess Edward Wright was like, I had a playlist, like there was this one song that I was like, this would be a great car chase song. And so then it became. Yeah, I mean, like, he basically said, I made, I wanted to make this movie since I heard this song. So he built a movie around a car chase and yeah. a song, which to me is, is like, kind of sums it up. It's evident. I wish there had been a, a um, conflict within him that was, I love this adrenaline rush. I love driving but I'm doing it for the wrong people, right. right? And then they could have done more of a comparison with his pizza delivery thing and made that a real joke. Like, well, also, that was like a one-off, like, oh, we got here really fast. Yeah. Why not have him be an ambulance driver? That would have been fun. Where you're like, he's actually driving fast to, like, help people. That would have been fun. Baby ambulance driver. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna save you. <laughs> Don't worry. Pew, pew. <laughs> it's like built in, it's two in one. You could watch it, you could not watch it. It definitely feels like a, a 17 to 18 year old boy who just discovered Tarantino and Bullet wet dream. Sure. And maybe that's just not necessarily for me, but I thought it was. Strangely <laughs> enough, because I, really, I really love a car chase. I, I, I love a car chase and I don't know. And a good soundtrack. It was, it was, it was good. It was, it was, it was, it was good. It was good. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was. <laughs> I don't know. I'm conflicted. Yeah.